and they're just always on, 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 on. They have like an insatiable imagination, an insatiable um, desire to learn, and they are on to the next thing. And as a parent, it, it, I will, pro I promise you, it is exhausting dealing with um, kids that do not have an off switch. <laughs> they don't have an off switch, so they just. YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Dion back with another video. And um, yeah, if you see some paint on my hands, I was doing a, a little project around the house, so um, don't mind that. What I wanna get into today is, um, so this is a bit of a challenge, um, being a uh, entrepreneur, business owner, or just a parent really in this digital age, you know, it's 2022 now, it's a lot going on. Uh, in the world as far as you know uh, viruses it's a lot going uh, going around with uh, just raising your kids it's a lot of challenges what i want to do is kind of highlight a couple things um that my wife and i that we kind of try to build our family around and some things that we focus on that it's important to us you know what i'm saying so basically if you don't know we have three uh children i used to say we had three kids under the age of five but my oldest just had a birthday um, in the beginning of the year. So now we have a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and a two-year-old. And my three-year-old has a birthday coming up. So we're gonna be at six, four, and two. And if you know anything about having small kids, there's something to say about having a bit of a break in between um, raising the family um, or space between the kids. Because when they're like back to back to back or stair step, it can be really exhausting dealing with like attitudes and things like that. Um, it takes a lot of patience and understanding. And, you know, when you're working from home, if you're working from home as a parent or if you are, you, I assume you have a career, you have a job, you have a life that you, that you, that you live in and you want to, you know, uh, do a good job on your, uh, do a good job on your job or in your business, but also provide as much love and nourishment and care for your kids. And it's really important to make sure that you are, you know, staying patient and being understanding of, you know, what's going on in their lives. Um, cause, because they depend on you, not only emotionally, um, they depend on you physically and, um, and even the environment, you know, you need to create a conducive, a uh, safe and protective environment so that they can be themselves. It's important to understand that there is no right way to raise a toddler, let alone three. You know, every parent um, has different like learning styles. Everybody has different upbringing. So everybody's kind of mix is gonna be different. So keep that in mind. Don't feel some kind of way if somebody else is raising their kid differently than you do it or you think that you think that um that you're not doing a good enough job or or you see people doing it differently you know as far as like judging or something like that just remember every it, there's no right way to parent you know you just have to do what works for you and your family now what i will say um with having young ones it is so important to have uh boundaries and my wife was really big into this idea and i don't know um it took me a little while to get adjusted to it, but the, the idea is kind of like, just like in business or as an entrepreneur, if you are a creative type and you're always kind of having your mind go all over the place or, or you're always bouncing from thing to thing, it's really important to have like structure in your life so that you can have more freedom. And I know it sounds counterintuitive, but the more structure that you create in your child's life, the better that they will be able to kind of navigate their own life in their own space. A quick example, um, my youngest son is, his name is Maverick and he is a Maverick in every sense of the word. He is very bold and a lot of, um, he's just very brazen. And so right now it's causing a lot of conflict between the, um, his two older siblings because they're in a situation where they're there have their toys and they're building um different you know carter got a ton of legos for his birthday so he's building a lot of legos and ava's got a dollhouse from, um, and they have you know the their their way of playing and maverick doesn't give a he don't give a damn about that so he comes in and breaks their legos rips everything apart and it's just really difficult for them 
to deal with him because you know we teach them it's not okay to hit it's not okay to like you know use violence but right now they just they get really frustrated and they have these lash out spells and we're as parents trying to figure out how to create boundaries for each of them so that they can play together or independently but in a way that's respectful so um, having boundaries is really important uh, and that's something that we're going through is like managing their play time and how to play together and learning how to share. Now, as far as um, when they have these anger spells and when they're constantly screaming and arguing and shouting at each other um, all day, it could be pretty exhausting, you know, and I'm and I'm kind of sugarcoating it, but it is exhausting. Um, because you just don't want to hear kids screaming and shouting over, you know, if somebody came into their room because they want to play alone. That's really the arguments that's going on. It's they're screaming and you would think that like somebody just got slapped in the face, but it's just because Maverick is playing in Ava's room or Carter's playing with Ava's toy. It's you would think that it's life or death, but it's really not. So um, it gets us frustrated in turn by the end of the day because we just are exhausted by hearing them constantly bicker back and forth and so um, it's important to have boundaries for us as well as far as how to deal with them in those situations and it's not a perfect science you know some days are better than others but just know that you're not alone if you're going through that situation where you have young toddler children who are constantly uh, uh, at, at odds or you know got friction going on between them so um, I would say disciplining toddlers is probably what I find is the most difficult age so far because when they're really young you know a lot of the things that they do they just do impulsively they don't exactly know what they're doing um, and then they start to become aware of their actions and you want to um, be able to discipline them to show them that they cannot <laughs> whip a ball at your face or um, get knives out of <laughs> out of the drawer and run around the house with them you need to create a sense of uh, safety for them so that they cannot always uh, do things that are harmful to themselves or harmful to 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 the family um, but you can't just haul off and just always like you know beat on them or give them spankings because you know I think in the black community that's just something that we've always defaulted into you know it could be a learned behavior or it just for whatever reason um you can't always just haul off and like you know spank your kids or, or you know so you have to be really creative as far as finding ways to discipline your children again there's no right way to do it it's really up to the parent and what's your level of comfort and what's the offense you know if it's something minor maybe you can just talk to them in a peaceful way if you're not uh like enraged or like just fired up um if it's uh, something that's very dangerous and they can hurt themselves maybe you have to sit them in time out give them a little bit of time to uh for you to cool off and to talk to them or you can stick them in time out and and then once you get them out of time out you can talk to them and explain to them why you know talk to them in a way that they can understand and create i try to use stories in order to explain or kind of articulate what it is that i want them to get so you know, that's something you got to play with. And I can promise you after having three kids, it doesn't really get easier and you get a little bit better at it, but it's a challenge. But basically the what, what I'm saying is you need to figure out ways to discipline the children um, in a way that, you know, they're not destructive to the house, to your property, to themselves, most importantly, and, and you know, figuring out different ways for them to uh, decompress, like when they're like when they get upset, you know, we try to create a safe environment, like if, for example, when Carter gets upset with Maverick destroying his toys, um, you know, we allow him to, you know, give, you know, have a little time to, you know, maybe cry or, or calm down, you know, because he goes into a spaz mode and, you know, you can't just always just shut it down because, you know, we as adults and parents, you know, we understand how it is, you know, when you're upset, you know, you have to have time to vent, time to decompress. So you as a child, you can't just always just say, stop that, cut it out. You know, you have to allow them time. They're human beings. So you have to allow them to be human, uh, human and emote. So, um, Again, it, it goes back to having these boundaries and creating safe, uh, safe, uh, safe walls, you know, 
for them to uh, to be themselves and be comfortable. Uh, another big piece to raising toddlers, especially in the digital age, is learning different ways to communicate with them effectively. It is um, every day, it feels like they're learning new words, they're learning how to speak, they're learning how to talk, they're learning how to communicate in their own way. And no matter what, what you think they know what you're saying a lot of times especially you know two three years old you know they may not have the verbal ability to articulate everything that that's coming across their mind but they know what they want to say so you have to be patient again and just slow yourself down and allow them to learn how to communicate with you and you as a parent become a better teacher and uh, allow them to um, figure it out you know because communication is communication is how we all interact with our environment and with the people in our environment and it's a learning process and uh, you know you have to create a good way to learn and um, you know have you know visual aids around um, my wife has always been really good about having um, different visual aids for the kids you know uh, for, for for example for food you know she has these charts um, with like all of the foods that we typically buy and it's really nice so that even when the kids aren't able to say I want I want an Oreo cookie or I want some I want some dried fruit like they can actually go and point you know so communication doesn't always have to be verbally it could be having visual cues and things that are around so that you can um, help them you know and then also you know she's got these play charts because carter is very he's a type a toddler i don't know <laughs> i don't know if that's a thing but my son's definitely a type a toddler and he functions better with the schedule and with an agenda he's always asking what what are we doing tomorrow what are we doing later on today and a part of uh, enabling each child or allowing them to be who they are is creating or uh, learning them and studying them and knowing you know how they tick and he needs to know what's going on and so having like a schedule for them uh, maybe not full of words because they're still learning to read but again using those pictures as ways to illustrate the day you know we do this we wake up we get dressed we brush our teeth we eat lunch, we go to school, those type of things so that they can kind of track, um, again, because they're very aware of symbols and, you know, that sort of thing. So having those aids are really important to, um, you know, that whole, that whole uh, growth and learning to communicate. Moving on, a big fear of mine is how to raise toddlers and children's young children and toddlers in this digital age. So there's really a lot of challenges when it comes to raising children and uh, inside the digital age. With all the screens, um, with all of the, um, it's just things are a lot faster and there's really no time for boredom. You know what I mean? When I grew up, we had commercials. So that was our time to go to the bathroom. That was our time to go get food, go get a drink of water, go play with some toys, run around the house and come back. Um, before the show came back on, you know? But now, there's really no time for boredom. There's really no time for the kids to study themselves and learn what they like and what they don't like. This is the age of the constant scroll. This is the age of binge watching. So kids are no different. I binge watch shows, uh, Game of Thrones, Flash, a lot of different programs. I, I, I binge watch them. And so that's the way the kids are viewing content too. So they don't get those like a waltz throughout the day they're just always on 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 they have like an insatiable imagination an insatiable um, desire to learn and they are on to the next thing and as a parent it, it, I will pro I promise you it is exhausting dealing with um, kids that do not have an off switch <laughs> they don't have an off switch so they just want non-stop stimulation and so that's a fear of mine is like how do I broach raising our family in a healthy environment um, but having like uh, respect 
with the, the with the environment around us and being able to have uh, times and moments to unplug so that we can slow down and just kind of catch up with ourselves and catch up with the world and we're not just being consumed by the technology. Um, even Alexa, you know, we have Alexa. Hopefully she doesn't go off. We got Alexa in the house, and so even if there's no screens, you know, Alexa's always listening in, and we got Disney soundtrack playing all the time and different music. So we have our dance parties. We like to turn up, but um, it's just you know, it's just it's important to figure out again what works for your family and your style of uh, learning and how you want to raise your family and just you know a couple things is just to be patient you know you, can, you know just kind of include include just the conclusion to this all is you just have to be patient and understand that there is no right way to parent especially with the toddlers um, having three or four or however many that you have it is going to be a challenge and you just have to give yourself a pass a lot of days um, balancing the work and the parenting uh, roles it's it's you're always going to be in balance and that's just the nature of life and the nature of things so you know with this with technology just kind of moving forward at an exponential rate you know pretty soon just the other day Carter actually asked me for um, one of those um, you know uh, meta meta virtual glasses opul op 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 oculus rift I, I don't know what they call you know this whole metaverse they got these new you know vr glasses that are coming out he just said he wanted those i don't even know where he saw that but he wants these new metaverse glasses and um and i'm just thinking like you know my my belief is like with technology once once it's out there you, it's like pandora's box you can't reel it back in so you know just as a way to move forward in this whole technological world it's you know you just got to be slow patient and you know just adjust with the times and you know be flexible and, and try your best you know in addition to being flexible try your best to use the technology to empower you and not be like handicapped um, or crippled by it um, that's all I got for this video I appreciate you tuning in this was a much longer video than normal so um, if you have any questions or comments you know leave them down below I love to hear a little bit about you know what you got going on in your life and I meant to uh, put this up in my video yeah. hey that's what it is this is some canvas prints for the children's room you know what I mean so if you want to create an environment like I said, that is empowering. You know, you have some cool visuals and some things that, um, you know, you can teach your kids what these mean, you know, um, strength, imagination, fearlessness. You know, these are all virtues that you want to raise your family with and that you want your kids to, kids to uh, grow into like strong people. So, um, you know, you could, uh, I'll leave a link below uh, to my Etsy shop. So if you want to go there and um, take a look at some of these prints, I'd love for you to check it out. But again, you know, um, Thank you for tuning in and I hope you have a great day. Peace.